Why, hello there. Welcome back to another episode of Books and Bullshit, where the topics are made up and your opinions don't matter. Zachary Chopchinsky here, the bow tie author. Sitting next to me is Three Smelly Assholes and <laughs> the Queen, uh, the, what is it? Uh, what, what did I call you earlier? I said, uh, I said, uh, okay, okay, the Witch of the Dark, the Queen of Snark, Martina McAtee. I like that better than Smelly Asshole, <laughs> well, you dick. The, the fuck is wrong? Look how your dog is laying now. This is just how he lays. <laughs> what the fuck? It looked like a dead toddler. That, that's how he likes to lay. He, this is how he lays on his brother, too. He'll put his neck over Chance's neck, and that's just how he does. Yeah, we're going to put this on Instagram. You guys need to watch out for that, because he looks like a dead fucking toddler. He's so cute, though, even though he's naked neck right now. Naked neck, puppy. He got naked neck. All right, today's episode is brought to you by... Our Patreon, um, because <laughs> we don't have fake sponsors anymore. We're supposed to have real ones, and that's you guys. So go to our Patreon and check it out. We're asking for a buck a month. You know, like I said, next time you're at the box or said. Dunkin' Donuts or getting some bullshit, yeah, four quarters, okay? Ten dimes. One damn dollar. That's all I'm asking. Please. 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 Suck. please. <laughs> I'll suck your dick, please. <laughs> I just need a dollar. <laughs> We don't even cost as much as one Krispy Kreme donut. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the ticket. <laughs> Dude, what? Oh, please, God. <laughs> Subscribe to the Patreon just so you can hear Zach say nipple like 850 times on our last sound check. I'm telling you, you'll forget what the word actually means by the time you're done. I'm not even going to say it. Because if no, you want to hear it, you need to go to the fucking Patreon and pay to. for that shit. You have to. It's but a dollar. Just, just say, but say milk for them, just so they know what they're in for. Milk? Milk. <laughs> milk. 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 It's once for dinner. Wait, what? I don't know. <laughs> I feel like I got fucked on that one. I'm getting milk for dinner. You I'm like those intolerant. That's some fucking bullshit. No, we're getting fucked if you get milk for dinner. Not not you. We're the ones who have to smell you. All right. Well, right. And now the, ch- the curtains are choking on their LaCroix. She can handle it. Trust me. She can swallow a lot. <laughs> now the curtains are flicking off, Zach. While choking, that it will be her last dying <laughs> declaration. Make eye contact and relax your throat. That helps. <laughs> Zach would know. Wow. That's how he pays for water and food. <laughs> All right. So, Martina, what's yes. today's episode about other than your dead toddler dog? My dog is not a toddler, nor is he dead. He is a baby. He is a teeny, teeny infant puppy. He is only 16 weeks old. Anyway, we're doing book to film adaptations. My I cannot parents. fucking wait. <laughs> there are so many. <laughs> oh my god. Can I just say the people that sit there and tell me every single time that the book did it so much better is not always true. Cause I, Lethal Weapon in a movie is way better than the book. There's a lethal weapon book? No, but that's the point. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like where have I been? <laughs> like, Why am I not reading am I Murtaugh so... and Briggs and constantly what? reading I'm too old for this shit? I was like, I am today years old when I learned that, that Lethal Weapon was originally a book. That's what? my point. Can you imagine how stupid Lethal Weapon would be as a book? I mean, look at all these other fucking action books that like guys mainline. You know, the funny thing, though, is that sometimes there are movies that I look at it and I the author in me thinks of the plot of the movie and I'm like, you know what? That would have been so much better as a book. We talked about one earlier, The Human Centipede. Tell me that Go written in fuck like... yourself. Like, <laughs> how dare you? I told you never to bring that up, ever. Like, fuck you. How dare fine, you? Fine, <laughs> The movie that dare not speak its name, but it, it doubles as an ATM fetish film. <clears throat> so, it, like... That... Pay a dollar and you can hear me hurl on fucking you. <laughs> oh, gross. Come on. Anyway, but, like, that, that story premise could sound so much... If it was, like, in a gothic, really, like, sci-fi, like, horror-type... It, it could have been done a lot ch- Written less... Written by who? The Marquis de Sade? I'm just saying... Nora Roberts could have written <laughs> <laughs> And made it fucking romance. <laughs> it's romantic. 
Nora Roberts can do anything. <laughs> Nora, we're looking for a sponsor yeah. here. And a dollar a We'll month. never tweet you mean things. We'll no. only say nice things to you forever. We'll fight a bitch for you <laughs> yeah, if we have right. to. Yeah, that's right. We will. Like, we... there's been a couple of times recently where we were getting ready to drive a place and throw down. It's true. Over stupid shit, like people forgetting mustard hey, or curtains. whatever. What, what's happening? What, I, I don't know what's happening. There, there are dwarves. Oh, you're supposed to be you're supposed to be getting photos apparently. Yeah, you're supposed to be in addition photos. to juggling knives over there and dealing with all of our sound stuff. Could you, know you also what? please be taking pictures of our adorable dogs? You know what? I'll take this one. And we're all completely silent. You know what? It's dead air. I'm sorry. I'm taking pictures of the dogs. Eat my ass. No. That's a that's a hard no. That's a hard limit right there, my friend. That would never happen. <laughs> Not like, ever. I, but the, there was a really great meme going around with the whole baby it's cold outside thing. And it was like a radio announcer. And it was like, thanks for calling in. Unfortunately, due to the negative press, we can no longer play baby it's cold outside for the holidays. Anyway, here's a song from Cardi B about eating her asshole. <laughs> But she got consent first, so apparently that's that's where it is. Yeah, that's yeah. where we're at. All right. All right. You want to kick this off? Okay. Oh Jesus! This, I can. This is only second recording of the day, guys. Buckle I'm gonna, up. Well, I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna say something that's gonna piss people off. But you know what? I'll fucking fight you. Oh shit! Is it about Twilight? No, don't even. I'll, it's coming there. But no, it's, it's the Harry Potter series. I will not and have not read or oh, seen any of the movies. I read the books. Well, I was no, like, that's you a... haven't read or seen any of the movies? Then what do you have to say if you well, haven't no, no. read it or I, seen the movies? That's not entirely true. Here's the dizzle. I read, uh, I, I watched the first movie, and they left enough out where I, as a child, because I'm actually, I actually was the same age as the Harry Potter characters. Like, I literally grew up at the same Jesus time Christ, with it. I'm old. And... So I grew up with that, and so that was always a big part of, like, everything. Like, that was, like, my getaway. And when I would – I noticed as a young kid all these things that they left out in the movie, I'm like, you can't – and then I come to find out that some things throughout the whole series, like, in the books, there's a character, Peeves the Poltergeist, who is such a pivotal role and drives a lot in many of the books, who isn't even mentioned in the movies. Fuck y'all. The books are better. Anyway, that's, that's me, and that's what I think. Okay, Harry Potter is amazeballs. It really is. The Absolutely. books were awesome. I <clears throat> had a child by the time the they became uh, movies, and <laughs> she's still mad because I left her at home for the first one, but took the rest of my family, <laughs> and my mom stayed home with her. How old was she? Four. Oh, yeah, you're staying at home. Yeah, because I didn't know <laughs> if it was too intense for her because I hadn't read the books. I didn't know anything about the series other than I saw the commercial, and I was like, uh, why have I never heard of this? This is amazing. Mostly because I didn't read middle school books oh, my back then. made me read these books when I was, like the first one she bought for me made me read it. Then I went and saw the movie and it was really good and I was like, screw it, I'm going to go read all the books. So at the time, I think only three or four of them had released. Uh, so I mainlined, maybe even more than that, it might have been a five or six at that point. But I read them all and then I remember for seven, we actually stood in line, me and Mick, waiting for that one to release and it was the like book? midnight yeah i did like, that too i was in yeah <clears throat> um but then as the movies came out i mean i love everything about the movies as far as like just the color saturation the music like the people oh like, i will say the score from yeah, harry potter the score, is amazing they just <clears throat> did such an amazing job as far as making it visually you know appealing and you know the audio and everything and it's like it's great that they you got to actually watch the characters grow up with the same actors even though they did replace lavender at one point um who lavender brown okay you fucking peeves a polter guys but you don't actually remember lavender brown oh um, no no I'm, but i didn't know they replaced with, oh granted i haven't seen the movies i didn't know they were replaced in the movies was my point well i meant in, with who i'm sorry not who is in the character in one of the <clears> first <throat> i think in the first couple of movies she was um mentioned and she was played by a black actress but then when they picked it back up she's played by a white actress and people made a huge deal out of it i mean rightfully so uh, no but, that one you fucked uh, up yeah um but they were like because before they she had never um 
described her in the book and then they said that afterwards they did describe her in the book and then oh all of a sudden she is white whatever sounds fake but okay um <laughs> but like that sort of thing is neither here nor there but like it was just cool to be able to like watch them grow up but i will say towards the end they tried to cram so much into even a movie they split like a book they split in half mm -hmm. that the cut scenes were literally just like scene 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 there was like no transition at all and it almost became like watching a montage and so towards the end of the films i was just like kind of done with the whole series i was happy that it was like over so to speak sorry jk i love you uh, <laughs> jk jk <laughs> But no, like, so I get it. Like, but the books were definitely more, obviously, more in depth. Everything everybody always says about the fucking books versus the movie. They were definitely more, uh, more in depth and you got more world building, essentially. But I think they did a good job. I think, I think they're, the, the movies stand on their own. We watch the fucking movies. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we marathon those movies every Christmas, my family. Like, so we just start in the morning and we watch all of them. So that's kind of like our tradition. So don't shit on the fucking movies. Because <laughs> you're shitting on my Christmas. <laughs> don't shit on my Christmas, Zach. But we all know Zach hates Christmas. <laughs> I don't even celebrate Christmas technically, so. Hey, no, dummy. No. <laughs> you can't hear you, dummy. He's deaf. <laughs> yep, here. Who's the dummy? <laughs> where are you going? No. It's your ass. <laughs> He's just like, go to sleep. He's just gonna go sleep. He's like, oh, I'll just go off the couch this way. We are. Where the fuck are you going? That's not gonna take down our entire recording equipment setup. Aww. He's oh, like, now I'm going to gaze at you longingly. Listen. And make listen. you feel like an asshole for being mean to I'm me. I'm on to your bullshit. <laughs> Don't you look away from me. Charity's so cute. Sorry, guys. We got, like, dead air as I'm trying to yeah. negotiate with my dog. <clears throat> well, okay. So that's just, like, my first start. Because there's a lot of... Oh, there's, God. There's so many. Oh like, I don't... God. This might have to be, like, a three-part series really while we just I really don't know where to everything. go from this. Yeah. Oh, I think we need to jump straight from Harry Potter to... Dot, dot, dot. Twilight. Twilight. <laughs> okay. I got dragged. Let's get into it. The first Twilight movie in high school. Get your fucking ass over here. God, sorry. Where where are you going? Spin in a circle. Let him spin, spin in, in a, a circle. circle. Come on, come on. Spin around. Throw that ass in a circle. And let's <laughs> Not drop it like it's hot. Hey, baby, I don't know what he's doing either. <laughs> nope. That's a thing that's not happening. Where are you going? Where are you going? Where are you going? Don't you have an ass to lick? Come on. <laughs> this way. God. Okay, I'm I'm trying to I'm sorry, I'm trying to I'm trying to so Twilight. Um, <laughs> oh yeah. Um, You're telling me this isn't worth a dollar. Come on. <laughs> so Twilight, uh, books. I, I got drugged to see the first one in theaters. You got I was drugged to see the first book? <laughs> the first How'd movie. that work out for you? The first movie. I've never read those stupid fucking books. <clears throat> and I have a theory as to why. Because you're not a 14-year-old girl? <laughs> no. As to why she wrote... Because here's the dizzle. The old... One of the old like paths of where vampires came from is they were people that witnessed... <laughs> they were people? Oh my god, Zach just busted shit up. open. <laughs> All right, punchline is they're creatures that are without soul and they're dark creatures and all that other shit, and that's why they can't be seen in the sunlight because it's the light of God and all that other shit. So the chick that wrote the Twilight books is wicked religious. Yeah, she's a Mormon, right? Yeah. Yeah, so my theory as to why she wrote such a pussed up fucking vampire is because then she could, oh, it's not the sunlight, they just, they're bedazzled. So that's <laughs> like, so now they're not like soulless demon things, and now it's God friendly. The end. It's also why she made them get married at 18. So they could do the <laughs> So they could do the dirty. <laughs> I will say Didn't that... they break the bed or something? Oh, yeah. No, she finally let it go. She let it go. <laughs> like, she was just like, yes! Now I can really unleash my... <laughs> yeah. And hey, next thing you know, we got fucking Fifty Shades of Grey. So thanks for that. Is it the same chick? No. It's, 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 but I didn't know Fifty Shades of Grey was Twilight fan fiction. 
Uh-huh. Yeah. I, mean, I, I, I didn't know E.L. Didn't know <laughs> we'll get into that in a minute, because that is okay. also a book to movie adaptation. Um, so I found out about Twilight because I was going to see another movie, and there was a bunch of kids in the theater, and they were just, like, going on and on and on. About, like, I have never seen, like, three 16-year-old boys and four 16-year-old girls just, like, oh, my God, you totally have to come see this movie. It's based on this book series, and it's just fucking amazing, and it's got by vampires and blah, blah, blah. You could tell these kids were totally drama kids. Um, so I went to the bookstore, and I found the first book, and I opened it up, and I read, like, three chapters just standing there. And it wasn't like, oh, my God, this woman's prose is dazzling. But there was just something very much like you just kept turning the pages because it was very engrossing and looking back on it now that i am a very cynical much older person i do a lot of eye rolling but it is very much how a lot of 16 year old girls especially at the time thought but it has a lot of themes in it that's really just toxic like being obsessed with a boy and not having your own life sacrificing everything for them like which is also something that, like, every book up until maybe 10 years ago fucking did. You know what I mean? God damn it. Sorry. My bad. You know, so I can't really fault Stephanie Myers for that. But the books were, were much better, unfortunately, than the movies. But the movies have their own magic in that you forget how bad they are. But they are the gift that just keeps on giving because no matter how many times you go back to them, they never disappoint. Like they are cringeworthy every time the dialogue is trite, the actors hate themselves. You just can't get enough of it. I will at least once a year go back and watch all of those fucking movies and every time just be like, why am I doing this to myself? Because it's just so good. It's so cheesy. It's perfect. It's I can't stand Christian Stewart. <clears throat> Aw, it's not her fault her face doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> she's like a stroke victim trying to act. Yeah, it's just like, I don't know, she's got resting bitch face that doesn't unbitch. Like It's not even Me and Layla face. completely, totally understand that, mm. like, concept, but like... It's more like resting deputy dog face. Like, she just, <laughs> like... There's no okay. bitch to it, it's just like... Ur, ur, but the ur, thing is, is like, ur. I've seen her in other stuff, but she tends to gravitate towards roles... Where she plays, like, an insolent, like, fucking, like, just a teen that's always just very sullen and, like, Ugh. So, like, that's what her face Such always angst. looks like. Yeah, she just, she just always looks like the super angsty teen. But then I've seen her in other things where she smiles and it's actually kind of almost painful to watch. Because it's, like, even she can't believe that she's smiling. Like, you know? <laughs> Where, where are you going? Where are you where going? Where are you going now? Where are you where going? Where the fuck are you going? Do you want to sit like a human? <laughs> Bueller. Come, your tail's on. tucked under your asshole. There you're going to break is. my toe. Why is your asshole wet? <laughs> Ew. All right, so this is where you live now. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, the fuck it is. I'm bigger than you. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Wow. <laughs> this my, <laughs> What is this? My dog is I have the better <laughs> angle, so I'm going to try to get a He's video of this. <laughs> My dog is stuck between the couch and table, and oh, he's just God. locked there. Oh, God. That was a terrible angle. Oh, I hate the selfie feature. Turn it off. Turn it off. Why is my camera facing my face? <laughs> Ever! I thought we had a deal. What are you doing? <laughs> Sir. All right. So, one of the other ones that we'll, we'll jump we'll jump from that to one that is kind of recent that although I've seen the first of the three fucking movies, it's on my favorite book of all time, which is The Hobbit. Oh. And sorry. I definitely don't think that that movie should have been so drawn out. And I was actually recently having a conversation with somebody, and they were saying, yeah, was the book really that big? And then I said, no. But there's so much shit in the Hobbit movies that wasn't in the book. That's why it's so fucking long. <laughs> I fucking hate Tolkien. I hate Lord of the Rings. Sorry, Molly. I know it's your favorite, but I fucking hate it. And the movies were even worse. It was like a travel New Zealand brochure. Like, for fuck's sake. <laughs> 
<laughs> it was just like it was. The Hobbit is different. Okay. Have you ever read The Hobbit? Is it by Tolkien? You can shut your. Then mind. I fucking didn't read it because he's a wordy motherfucker, and I don't care about dwarves. Where the fuck are you going? <laughs> dwarves are my favorite like creatures. I know. God, <laughs> which makes it even funnier. But I just didn't like his version of like fairies and hobbits and I don't know, it's just not my jam. I'm not a sci fi fantasy person. I like my ghosts and my vamps and my werewolves not so much down with the foofy fairies and the like the little creepy hobbits. Okay, foofy fairies? That's some insensitive shit, Martina. <laughs> well, if any fairies would like to come fight me on that like I write fairies too, but my fairies aren't so foofy. <laughs> What the fuck are you doing? He's like, I don't know. But now I've trapped myself and I don't know how to get out. Anyway, moving on. All right. Well, so, okay. So what uh, What other... <clears throat> what other movies can we shit on? Right. <laughs> oh, my God. They're just... Uh, the lot. Hunger Games? Anyone? Anyone? I mean, <clears throat> never read the never read the books, never watched the movies. Layla really likes the Hunger Games. Oh, the curtains. I'm sorry. The Hunger. Like, the Hunger Games. Okay. It's no. never going to fucking get old. I'm not saying the N word. Oh, I hope not. <laughs> We're never gonna get a fucking sponsor then. <laughs> Sponsored by the Republican <laughs> Party. <laughs> Oops, sorry, Layla, cut that out. <laughs> I'm just saying, if you guys want to hear me repeatedly say the N word, not go to that N word. <laughs> There's going to be some really disappointed people out there. This is going to end badly. <laughs> okay, no, you are not going to lick his asshole. Stop it. Charlie, we are not there yet. Stop that. Hey, what, what happens in the den stays in the den. <laughs> what the fuckity fuck are you? <laughs> I promise that wasn't me. <clears throat> he found a way out. <laughs> now he's going way out. <laughs> That's it. The curtains are mad. The curtains are showing him to the door <laughs> and Here. almost killing herself with her headphones still on. Nope. Nope. God damn it. No, Charlie. <laughs> no, Charlie. He's like, I just want him to love me. <laughs> Get under. Come here, baby. Hey. Charlie. Hey, Charlie. Do you want to say something? Come to Candy Mountain, Charlie. Come to Candy Mountain. <laughs> Shun the naysayers. <laughs> shun. Can you hear Charlie giving me kisses? I say, shun the non-believers. All right, Charlie, go lay down. Come here, baby. He's like, oh, I'm his baby now. <laughs> Come here, sweet boy. Oh, yes. Mm. He's, he's got the head of a pit bull and the <laughs> no, body of a wiener dog. Doesn't. Like, he's he's a, so top heavy. He's a dachshund beagle mix. Not even close. He's a doxel. He's a doxel? He's a doxel. Or a bagel. <laughs> are you a bagel are you a bagel oh technically he would be a daigle <laughs> which just sounds dirty <laughs> oh my little daigleberry <laughs> <laughs> like dago <laughs> all right so here's the deal we got to start talking about books and shit and be professionals uh, for a minute okay well we were talking about the hunger games before we were so rudely interrupted my dogs being assholes so you know the hunger games like i said i never really got much into those at all to be completely honest um holes was a good book until shia Booth ruined it <laughs> running through your life from shia LaBeouf. up the mountain god damn it shia LaBeouf. <laughs> i don't know the hunger games I still remember my kid telling me, she's like, we have to go see the Hunger Games. I was like, all right, what's it about? She's like, well, she's like, it's like a dystopian society where they pick kids from like every division and then they make them fight to the death on television. It's like, what? <laughs> what? These are kids books? And I was like, why would anybody want to go watch kids murder each other? And it's a ripoff from a Japanese storyline. Oh, shit. Battle Calling Royale. out Suzanne Collins. Oops. No, it's called Battle Royale. That's uh, still horrible concept. I do not want to watch children slaughter each other. However, they're pretty good movies. Not going to lie. Uh, I never read the books. I was not reading. When these books came out, same thing with the Maze Runner. They all kind of came out around the same time. And they were all trilogies. And it's, it's yeah. very like that niche. Yeah. And I wasn't, I wasn't, I'm not a dystopian person. Like I don't really care for the whole 
post-apocalyptic kind of like new society utopia do you want to know something that's really interesting is um layla's stepfather-in-law um but rick or not stepfather-in-law her stepfather my stepfather (laughs) i was like layla's stepfather-in-law your father (laughs) yeah no 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 no. so my stepfather and layla's stepdad rick um he's an english professor and he actually teaches a lot of um uh, post-apocalyptic. He actually has whole courses on post-apocalyptic literature. He got on me because I sent him uh, a box. <laughs> Did set. he ask your permission? No, and he's just all beard and hair and lumberjack. But so no, he he. We sent him this the, this uh, um, anthology that I worked on. It was all post-apocalyptic dystopian. And he goes, "You understand that speaking strictly from a definition and genre, there's no such thing as a post-apocalyptic dystopian, right? Well, and he yeah. and I was like, well, and he was like, seriously, you cannot have the two. And he went on like about, he knows that it's a genre right now and it's getting a thing in books and stuff like that. He goes, but it's either post-apocalyptic or it's dystopian because the two, ne'er the two shall meet. All so right. This has been education. <laughs> you know what? Great. I like to provide sustenance with my... Regular broadcasted network. Does he? I will say the one movie that I can say off the top of my head that I preferred over the book was Silence of the Lambs. Ooh. I have to say, like, on film, it translated so much better. And maybe it's just because I've I've been mainlining, like, those kind of crime thrillers for so long that with the book, it was kind of like just another book about a serial killer. But fuck, Anthony Hopkins, man. Yeah. And then the dude who played Buffalo Bill. I'm sorry, I don't know your name, bro. You were awesome if you're still alive. Um, yes, he's still alive. I mean, you don't know. People fucking die of drug overdoses left and right. <clears throat> Not Buffalo Bill. <laughs> well, I don't think that's his real name. <laughs> Some people comb to the side. He parts it to the back. And then the girl that played the one who got kidnapped. Uh, I see her all the time in shows. And I'm like, oh, it's the kidnapping girl. <laughs> Silence of the Lambs. Like, it's the chick that didn't put the lotion on it. Exactly. It's the one who kidnapped his little fucking toy poodle. Or whatever the hell that little runt dog was. Uh, I think it was oh, now poodle. it's Layla making all the noise. Mm-hmm. It was either a toy poodle or a Bichon Frise. Uh, I don't know. I know. I think it was a Bichon. Like, it was like a... Nice butt. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. I'm sitting here trying to record a thing, and it's like, ba down. <laughs> and I'm like trying to read Hamlet off her ass. All right, I know, right? Now she's on all yeah. fours. Dear I'm into God. This, this podcast I'm... just made a turn. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be worth brown more brown than a dollar brown. now. I know, right? But, I mean, you guys are, I'm not much for talking during coitus, so you guys are just going to get, like, sounds. Ugh. Gross. Well, you could talk them through it. <laughs> like, I'll be like the golf announcer. <laughs> With that weird, quiet voice. Where the fuck did she... I swear to God, that cat should have been named Houdini. Charlie. Watch out for Charlie. Why am I... I'm making sure I say it into the mic. Watch out for Charlie. (laughs) Charlie. Where the fuck did that cat come from? I don't know. Maybe he needs to go out there, too. He wants so bad to be with Lafitte. Who does not... Just throw the dog. He looks so incensed. He's like, how dare you? Oh, Don't you know who I am? I'm Charlie. <laughs> look at Loki. Candy Mountain. Look at Loki. You can throw me, Mom. Yeah, he's like, throw me, throw me. Do right. me next. <clears throat> what so, the fuck were we talking about? We were talking about book to movie adaptations. We were talking about Silence of the Lambs, which I said was a better oh, movie we're than it was Breed of that dog. Yes, I think it was, I think you were right. I think it was like a little Bichon Frise kind of dog. Speaking of fucking dogs, what the fuck is your dog doing? Downward dog. <laughs> He's downward dogging. Are you trying to get over here? Oh, and you succeeded. Kudos. He's free. <laughs> that's a good um, one. And you know, it, it, yeah, I, I got to say, sometimes that's the other thing with it is sometimes everybody's like version in your head of what a character is like is always going to be different. It's whatever you do it. But sometimes, in the especially in the film adaptations, the character brings so much to it. That you never thought it would be like that. Fellas, I'm trying to record, and you guys are just like tongue-punching each other next to my mic. I'm sure that's getting picked up. And you're probably making me sound like I have a lisp or a cleft palate or something. Know, he did not like the word lisp. He like bolted like you threatened to like... What, can, I just, can I just say, why does the word lisp have an S in it? That's so fucked that's so up. so cruel. It's very mean. Charlie. 
God no. damn it, Charlie. I just put them all outside. I can't. I don't know what else to do. <laughs> like, it's anarchy now. They were good for one whole podcast, and now they're just like because they've had their nap and now they're awake. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> They're like a toddler, they're all just, hopped up on sugar. And he just wants nothing more than to be loved and accepted by Levi. So you yes, need to, you he's need to go out of the just room. Just praying so hard that Levi will one day. Levi's gonna charge come in on, here Charlie. like a fucking ox in there. Charlie, he is. go on. Go on. It's okay. He's like, You you threw me back on the couch. Charlie, last time. go. Go on, baby. Go, Charlie, go, Charlie, go. What about you? Come on. Come on, crackhead. <laughs> he's like, I can't I, I'm new. I don't know what to do. <laughs> It's so much cooler out there than it is. Stay out. Oh, God. And yet, somehow, in five minutes, we're going to find Bambina in here. <laughs> Ty's going to roll his fat ass out from under the couch, like, where did everybody hey, go? Guys, what's going on? Are there snacks still? <laughs> fat asshole. Oh, God. Okay. But, uh, but you know, but one, yeah, no, but it, dude, one that remix. I really like. <laughs> Um, one, one adaptation that I really do like, especially recently, and the curtains dad got me on it, is the first film adaptations of Sherlock Holmes played by Sir Nigel Rathbone. Fucking awesome. They're black and whites. We oh. have them all. He gave us a box set. We have the whole thing. We've oh, watched that's nice. They are so good. Do you know that <clears throat> Sir Arthur Conan Doyle hated his character Sherlock Holmes doesn't surprise me he hated it he said that it made him mad that everybody just assumed that Sherlock Holmes was really as smart as he made him out to be when in reality it was all basically stuff that was only true because he made it true like nothing he did was actually as clever as like people like as it should have been I made him that smart like I had to dump like, right, but like he would say, "Oh, well, because of this, 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 and this, I deduced this." But in reality, it could have meant ten million other things, but it didn't because Sir Arthur Conan Doyle needed it to mean this. He's like, and the fact that nobody, I guess, ever questioned him or called him on it, it bothered him. But I have to say, like, I think with the newer adaptation of Sherlock with Bandy Wampit Cumbersnatch or whatever his name is, just kidding, Bandicoot Bumblebatch. <laughs> yes. <laughs> With my man, <laughs> Benedict, <laughs> Bandicoot, <laughs> Bandicoot Melon Patch. That's what it is. I really do think that they they do a great job of making it like letting you follow along with the clues, so you're like, oh, Who, Benedict Cumberbund. Yes, <laughs> my man looks kind of like an alien, but still kind of hot. So, but yeah, I I will say with the new Sherlock, I kind of. I think it, I think it's a good. I wish they would make them faster. Yeah, I really like I really like um, Benny Hanna come along's character that he plays. I fucking hate the BBC because they only put out like three episodes every season, well, and then like, it takes six seasons. They're like an or hour six and a half years. to two hours a piece. They're movies. They're not episodes. Really. Right, they're but they call them movies. episodes. The same thing with Luther. They're like, oh, here's your three movies. We'll see you in six years when he's too old to act anymore. Like, fucking put your shit out faster. I have Thank that you. conversation every time I eat too much dairy. Ew. So. <laughs> Gross. <clears throat> was that the chair? <laughs> <laughs> and that was Zach showing you. I mean, you were leaving Exactly what happens with like, dairy. Were you trying to get that one cheek sneak going on? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't work. Yeah, don't keep rocking the chair. We get it. You vape. Um, I hate it when you say that. <laughs> Um, what about, did you guys read, did you guys read Fight Club before it was a movie? No, I don't need to read it though, because I've seen the movie. No, you're wrong. Okay, this is one of the ones I will say, uh, Chuck, I'm going to totally butcher his last name, Polanyak, I think. Um, Bless you. He, he does it a little bit in the movie where he's like, I am so-and-so's impotent rage. Yeah. Like that kind of thing. He does that so much more like aptly in the, in the books. Like it was just, it, the whole book is just sort of dripping with this kind of disdain for like the society. And you kind of get that a little bit in, in the movie, but I feel like you don't, you don't get it to the level that he wanted you to feel it, like, in the books. I, I completely get that. 
Okay, Layla's gone. Let's talk. About <laughs> okay, Zach, say all the stupid things that Layla gets mad at you for. Do it now. I know, right? Um, I don't know what to do right now. It's like it's like your parents just left. The for, teacher like, left the room I know, during right? the middle of a test. Fucking anarchy! Like we're actually speaking lower, guys, because the curtain. Oh my like, god! Can you yeah, pass so anyways, this message on to really Eric? Good, yeah, so it's a really good film. Excellent. Um, yeah, yeah I come. really like Brad Pitt's character. Yeah, I liked his character, all eighteen of them. I mean, his abs. His, yeah, he was yeah, a good character. No, I would definitely run my tongue up about his abs. I don't, <laughs> his character. <laughs> hi, hi, curtains. Okay. Um. Did you step outside because you had to fart and you didn't want us to be able to blame you? I think she was checking on the dogs. At least that's her story, and she's sticking to it. Sticking to something. <laughs> What? Like nobody in here has ever had a really itchy butthole because you didn't do a thorough job the first time. <laughs> Ew! What is wrong with you? I call it as I see it. Is that my code? How did you see it? <laughs> with my brown eye. <laughs> I take it back. Don't pay us a dollar for this. It's not worth it. This is terrible. <laughs> I'm sorry. This whole thing is derailed so quickly. Take your money back. <laughs> We're refunding all four people who are on our Patreon. All seven I'm so sorry. But seriously, go to our Patreon. <laughs> okay. Uh, how about the king of, like, book-to-movie adaptations? Your friend and mine, Stephen, Stephen King. King. <clears throat> I actually, to be honest, um, I've never completed a Stephen King book. Realistically, but I've I've read I've read through a lot of them. That, that's one of those books. You where... talk about this man's dick so much, and you can't even be bothered no, 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 to no. fucking finish one of his books. But I've seen every movie all the way through. But the thing about Stephen King is, I got I I got a, I got I became aware of Stephen King through watching all those movies, and so then I tried to watch the books. But then because it's one of those... <laughs> I tried to watch the books. But then I realized I actually had to know how to read. The books didn't just jump up off the page and act themselves out for me. You knew what I <laughs> fucking meant. This is just how it is, Zach. This is our shtick. You do dumb shit and I make fun of you. That's just how we work. Okay, that's fair. Everybody has a role to play. But goddamn. <laughs> okay. I watched all of his movies first and then I tried to read the books. But I liked the movies more. So that's why I never really quite made it through. Like, um, The Mist, for example, that's a little novella. Like, that was a full-length film, but the actual book was a little, just a novella. Yeah. A lot of his stuff was. Yeah. I, I just, I, he always, because he was always very heavily involved with him, like Anne Rice was in the first interview with the vampire. So I feel like they always did such a just job. I'd get halfway through a couple of his books, like, you know, It, and so, and um, Rose Red is actually a favorite of mine. Oh, Rose Red. Oh, by the way, um... Awesome miniseries. We, we've spoken about that on here before, and I was telling you how I could never find it, never find yeah, it. Yeah, and then I told you that they were probably pulling it from there and yeah, doing a re, like a digital days, remaster. Yeah, yeah. She said, she said, oh yeah, they're probably because I couldn't find it anywhere, guys, on Amazon. Even, no, I could. Find Disney old. does this with their movies. They like yeah. yank them, and they're like, okay, oh, yeah. and then boom, they throw them up for like a fuck ton of money, and yeah, they're like, you got five days, bitches. Is an ultra four K Blu Ray set, and it was like seventy fucking dollars. Totally worth it. It, yeah, it is. But um, I have uh, I have a my, I have a friendly pirate at work who's uh, just gonna go ahead and uh, give me a flash drive one day with hidden documents on it. He um, said <clears throat> publicly on record. Yeah, I didn't say who, what, where, when, or why, or how. I'm sure five minutes in an interrogation room, and you'll sing like a fucking. Character. Actually, I'm gonna own any interrogation room ever, because I'm just going to shit and piss myself. <laughs> so literally every time they his. sit down in the room with me i'm just gonna like in the rules of the animal kingdom if you poop there it's yours <laughs> absolutely they're gonna try to sit down like uh so mr oh, what the hell is that smell <laughs> like every time you come in here i'm going to shit I'm telling you now this is the ball's near fucking court this you is the weirdest in interrogation <laughs> technique ever. oh yeah i'm gonna get weird with it <clears throat> you ain't gonna these win. are guys who've been around d comp though so i don't know if you're gonna win that why am i getting homicide detectives from <laughs> fucking blu-ray uh, you show me a fucking guy that you show me a cop that hasn't been around a decomposing body. Seriously? Or, or is one. Yeah, that's more the point. Yeah, probably. Um, I would say, I don't know, like I there's so many books that I read. They really do kind of stand up for the adaptations though. Cause even the stand, which they're turning into a TV show, I'm super yeah, excited I saw your about. Post about that. Um like when they did the miniseries, I have to say I read the book and it was such a huge book and I just read the whole thing in like three days because i just couldn't stop reading it um 
they did a really good job adapting it. But that's the nice thing is like the 80s was like the 80s and early 90s was all about the miniseries, like the North and the South. Like they just love them a fucking 10 hour miniseries. They're like, we're going to just break this book down and we're just going to get every detail. Well, I forgot that, the, that, for example, Rose Red, <clears throat> when I was reading up on it and it, it says from the original four part miniseries, the television miniseries. And I know Rose Red is long as shit and it was a miniseries, but I'm like, shit, I didn't know it was four fucking parts. Yeah. No, I remember my, like my mom and I were, that was our thing. As soon as there was like a Stephen King mini, any kind of miniseries really, but especially Stephen King, we watched The Stand together. Um, we watched It together, uh, which that was a, another great one. I mean, the ending of It is just always stupid. I was like such a, I just feel like at the end, Stephen King was like, oh, fuck, I'm on deadline. Uh, yeah, that's what it was. Like, huh. like, and then just like. She rode in the basket down yeah, the hill. Like. Yeah, it was just such a, like a, just a throwaway, like, bleh, like, sure, whatever, that works. Like, that it kind of is always such a disappointment every time I read the book or see it. I'm just like, nah, they kind of fucking screwed the pooch on that. But whatever. It's fucking Stephen King. He can do what he wants. He can screw all the dogs he wants. Um. <laughs> What? Let me rewind that. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> Layla, erase that. Um, <laughs> Did I fucking miss something here? Um, That's Bram Stoker, first of all. <laughs> no, he liked making people, other people fuck dogs. Stephen um, King fuck a dog? Wait a minute. Did you just like Freudian slip or is there a story to this tale? <laughs> no, Screw the pooch. You know that saying. Oh. And I said he can screw all the dogs yeah. he wants. Nope. Yeah, you probably should have stuck to the original colloquialism on that one. Well, I said it first, but you weren't listening because you were busy deep-throating your Coke can over there. Per the usual, you just zoned out. Fuck you. <laughs> the curtains is judging him. Um, what other ones? They they were they were on a tear in the in the nineties about Stephen King. They did like um the Tommy Knockers. That was one that's not oh, even yeah. the Langoliers. Like they they were just throwing them up there. Uh, but The Shining that was a great adaptation. That one was really really good. I mean Jack Nicholson can't <clears throat> fucking beat that shit. Um, it was a really good one actually. Carrie, I. I get why people liked it, but it wasn't really, I mean, I don't know, girl being bullied. (laughs) If I could have burned down my fucking high school with my mind, my high school would have been fucked. And they've done multiple (laughs) adaptations of Carrie. Like, they even had, like, a part two, The Rage, Carrie 2, and all that. You know, back to the (laughs) book. Understand that reference. <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> Wasn't oh. it Breakin? Was that the, was that the name of the movie? Breakin Two Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> it was about break dancers in the eighties. I don't think it was. I, I got to look at. I got to look that one up. I'm looking it up. But you oh go head God. on with your Carrie adaptation. So no, I'm actually I was going back to Steven to to uh, the Shining. You remember that one scene when she's running through the hallway and there's that bear that's given oral to that dude on the bed. <laughs> <laughs> what in which movie the shining and she's running through the, the the stairwell she stops in the stairwell and looks into a room and there's a guy laying on the bed and the bear on its knees and then the bear kind of sits up and somebody wearing a bear costume and turns and looks at her and then the man in the suit sits up <gasps> yes okay so <laughs> it's like i thought we were still talking about carrie for some reason and no I was like, so what? i actually was i was reading into that and the director added that in there because going through like the pervert well that his <laughs> his whole theory and the, he kept putting small little nuance like that in the movie because his theory was jack was also a pedophile and had been abusing danny his whole life gross <clears throat> okay that guy had some shit to work through yeah and so like there's like a teddy bear in like one of the first scenes where the there's like a, somebody's talking to danny and it, that like plays off that it's really really weird i had to read this whole article on it like, you had like, to i'm like because well, every time i see that, article. that's such a weird thing to happen i'm like wait what the fuck is that i had to look it up that's crazy yeah uh, that movie was really really scary uh the exorcist started out as a book by william peter blatty <laughs> I, I always love. My last I name. always love that that was his last name, Blatty. <laughs> it sounds exactly like. Is that like, a character for, that Robin Williams played for? You know, um, 
The joke's not funny because I forgot the name of the movie. And because you're paying it more attention to your phone than you are oh, to the podcast. What's the movie? I oh, don't fucking, know. Um, not the never ending story. Um, <laughs> Fern Gully, The Last Rainforest. Oh. This character's name was Batty, but I couldn't remember the fucking movie, so it ruined my joke. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Oh, yeah, The Exorcist. I definitely think the... <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Somebody's out there right now. Or Levy is just doing his thing. On. Somebody's going... So <clears throat> The dogs are mauling somebody from the back... From the rest of the... In the, in the back end of the house. They're oh, doing what? They're mauling somebody. I'm, I'm assuming that it's not a... Uh, we still recording? Are the curtains? Are no, I think on? she. I think she hit those stop button, so she doesn't have to fucking edit all this out later. What the fuck is happening? <laughs> that should be our tagline. <laughs> this podcast is a shit show. <laughs> so, no, we're still recording. <laughs> Are we still recording? Yep, the curtains confirmed it. Hi, everybody. <laughs> and this podcast is a shit show. It is yeah. confirmed. <clears throat> that is. I'm not going to lie. I'm so blind that I just glanced up, saw that hook from your ceiling, and I thought there was a giant fucking bug on the ceiling, and I legit almost fucking screamed into my microphone. <laughs> Did you say that into the microphone? So the curtains is angry now, so now we got to really record some primo shit. Yeah, now she's going to give us the death stare and make and make us scared all, the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> the door creepily closes, like... <laughs> yeah, we thought we saw you click the button, curtains. Yeah, no, I really thought you turned it off. That's fine. It's all good. We it's didn't say so anything bad. Funny. <laughs> you say this podcast is a shit show. Yeah, you're like this podcast is a shit show. <laughs> you're so angry. That with should be us. our new tagline. Yeah. Books is bullshit. This podcast this is, is a, a shit, shit show. show. <laughs> the real shit show. That's our that's our tagline. The real shit show. I uh, want. I'm laughing, coughing. <laughs> For fuck's sake. <laughs> Anyway, what we were saying. Um, God, my fucking leg itches. That's not your leg. <laughs> it is. Dig deeper. That. Jesus. <laughs> All the way to the wrist. Shit. I, I forgot to take my watch off. I think The Exorcist was definitely scarier as a movie than it ever was as a book. I've never, I never real. read the book. But the movie well, was so good. I can tell you that the book is only about that thick. And it's very unassuming looking, but it was, I mean, it was a good, it was good. I read it. Um, I read that and Rosemary's Baby in the same week. I still think both movies are better than the books. Hmm. Bite me. What's one? Oh, um, Flowers in the Attic. Dude, I was just telling her Lifetime has remade all four Flowers in the Attic books and I just recorded them on uh, my DVR and they also did my Sweet Adrena. I am so fucking stoked to go watch me some incest movies. I can't. The Flowers in the Attic was so sad and depressing. I just can't. It was, it was like tragedy porn. Like I could not stop reading it. It was just so sad and so miserable that I was just like, my family's so fucking normal. I was just reading, reading, reading. I was like, ew, he's fucking his kid. Weird. I'm just mainlining these books. And that's why I went into the porn industry later. No, just kidding. Um, but seriously. The more you know. Yeah. But yeah, so I'm super excited to go watch those incesty movies that I loved so much as a small child. Another really good one that I liked, I know I mentioned, a couple, mentioned it a couple times now, but I really, I just think the film did such a fantastic job in Dust. This was Angela's Ashes. I never read it nor saw it's a long movie. I mean, that that's. Like I think that's really movie. what deterred me. I was like, 
Oh, no. I don't have that kind of time to I devote mean, to a movie. If memory serves, that bastard's like a four-hour movie. But it is really, really good. And it does a really good job of portraying the poverty in Ireland throughout. It's a really good movie. Um, <clears throat> I'm still portraying the poverty in Ireland. You're welcome. Yeah. I live it. <laughs> My bank account portrays that every single day. I think we It's should... always a potato famine in my house. <laughs> I think we should just say fuck it. We should find a country that l- welcomes authors and just move there and start over. I'm sorry, what is this magical land you speak of? Is it like of? the Netherlands or something? Oh, sure, if they want 70% of our non-income. <laughs> yeah, but doesn't it, like, what, what country, I was re- reading a post recently that said, like, they automatically buy, like, 500 copies of the book. Oh, that was Norway. <clears throat> Norway. Yeah. I knew it was an N and involved Vikings. Yeah, no, they they buy 1,000 copies of your book for the library or 1,500 if you write children's books. Yeah. Go Norway. You're awesome. That's why you're so much better than our country. Let's go to fucking Norway. I said it. Those old sweet. I can't. One, they don't want us. Norway <laughs> doesn't <laughs> want us. Two, we can't afford to live in Norway. It's expensive. I mean, maybe a small fishing village <laughs> where we could maybe possibly buy a small shack. <laughs> but And none of us can speak Norwegian. Like, that shit is hard. Ask Esri. She speaks it. Oh, so I... I... I, was I mean, maybe we could kidnap Ezra. Wait, no, that's, she's actually 15. We can't say that. <laughs> Never just mind. Kidding. I was just, just kidding. kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> JK all the well. This podcast is a shit show. <laughs> yes. Um, ooh, you're going to get excited over this one. I'm already aroused. <laughs> Shawshank Redemption. Oh. Uh, <laughs> he just came. <laughs> it's everywhere, including in Andy Dufresne. Um, <laughs> I, warning, Morgan Freeman voice is about to appear. <laughs> <laughs> this is our Morgan Freeman <clears throat> warning. <laughs> <laughs> There's freckles and gray hair everywhere. It's just me. It's like uh, Morgan Freeman's been old like his whole, like going all the way back to like lean on me. Well, I know Zach won't know this because he's never actually read my books. But my character, Miller, is literally Morgan Freeman. It literally says he looks like he should play God in every movie. And it's based on Morgan Freeman playing God in Bruce Almighty. All right, so I'm going to try to do this Morgan Freeman voice. This is Morgan Freeman with a head cold. All right. How's this Morgan Freeman? (laughs) Better than your Morgan Freeman with a head cold. Okay. So, Andy Dufresne. (laughs) That's his only. He's like such a one-trick pony. He's only got Andy Dufresne. That's all he can say. That's like Shaggy. Like I can do like, hey, Scoob. (laughs) But the original uh, was also a short story called Rita Hayworth and the Shawshank Redemption by Stephen King. Rita Hayworth. Oh yeah, she was the chick that he hung on the wall to cover up the hole he was digging. A poster of her, yes. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, that's probably you know, a little important. He wasn't. He wasn't <clears throat> prison. I think it's important to note that he did not, in fact, hang Rita Hayworth on his wall. <laughs> that was Silence of the Lambs. No. <laughs> right. Um, we haven't even gotten to our audience because uh, we've got answers. better shit. Um, so God. one that actually, um, it was, uh, it was a graphic novel to TV adaptation, which was the walking dead. You can see my collection down there. I've read all of them and walking dead was originally done. I believe it was back in the eighties. Like it's been around for a long time and they've only recently kind of picked it up. Well, last few years, <clears throat> but they've changed the, the first like season, season and a half. It was so close to that, that I lost interest because i'm like you know what i've already seen this and i like the graphic novels that's the cool thing about graphic novels is there's pictures and then <laughs> i've already watched this movie in my brain <laughs> basically and then the people they were picking up on that so then they started changing it and they made and everyone's like oh no the show's so much different now i'm like that doesn't make it any better for me because i like the fucking graphic novel don't fuck with it i think you have to like especially when it comes to books to television versus books to movie you have to just throw everything you know about the books out the window because they're trying to come up with an overall arc and also keep the show going for multiple seasons. And after a while, like that, that gets hard to do with like the content you already have. Like if you run out of books, you got to kind of go off the cuff or like with say the vampire diaries where it was originally written in 1993, but it came to be on television in 2002 
the first four episodes are all fucking fog machines and ravens, which was a huge hit in 93, not so much in 2000. So they realized that they were losing their audience and had to adapt. So you kind of have to go with where your ratings take you when, so you can't really be too beholden, I think, to the books. Well, and one of the things about The Walking Dead, like the graphic novels, is a lot of stuff that happens is much darker. Oh, yeah, I know. Like, uh, there was a lot of stuff that that they actually wrote out of the the show because they were just like, it won't play well with the audience. Like, originally when they went, when they, I don't know if you're familiar with the show at all. I've watched everything up until the season where they brought in Negan and they killed off He Who Shall Not Be Named. And, uh. I was like, go fuck yourself. That was it. He was the only character left I cared about. So when they were in the, um, when they were in, <clears throat> uh, shit, the, the prison, when they first showed up, they were actually a larger group and one husband and wife, they had two twin girls. And so the prisoners were there, they let the prisoners out and they're doing all the deal. Spoiler deals. alert. <laughs> well, yeah, well, it's in the graphic novels and apparently nobody's reading those. And that's not true. Those are things are huge. I don't know. Um, so then one, uh, eventually the two girls go missing and so they're looking for them. They're missing for like an hour in the graphic novels and they find them cut into small pieces in the laundry room and their heads posted up like on top of a washing machine, like looking out like this gory scene. Cause come to find out one of the prisoners that's in the prison that they're dealing with is a psychopathic serial killer. Well, they are in prison. <clears throat> I know, but there's like a lot of stuff like that, which is much, much Well, darker. Maggie was raped, wasn't she? By the governor? I don't and know. I'm pretty sure she was, but not in. They didn't go that. They didn't take it that far in the, in the actual. Uh, oh, oh, in the rabbit. Um, almost. It came close. No, I'm pretty sure she was actually raped. They made a huge <clears throat> deal about the fact that they cut it out. It's in. I have. I have that scene in one of those graphic novels. I'll pull it up. I'll look it up. <laughs> I don't. Because really I've. I've never. There's one. I remember he tried, and then she. She basically defended herself. Like she was sexually assaulted, but it never got to the rape portion. Yeah, maybe and then that he, like, was like locked it, her but... in a room with another zombie because he didn't get his way. Yeah, the governor was a real piece of shit. Obviously. God, he was such a piece of shit. And now every time I see that actor in a different role, I'm like, still like, "You're Dean piece and of Sam's shit. dad." <laughs> Don't ever fucking talk about Dean and Sam's dad like that. He is a fucking Jeffrey Dean Morgan is. Oh God, he's beautiful. He was beautiful as Denny. He was beautiful as Papa Winchester. And even if he is a baseball bat wielding psychopath, he's still beautiful. He just has no ass, which I just cannot get past. Once somebody pointed that out to me, I can't unsee it. He's literally like flat back straight to the legs. I don't know what happened. It's like he's been amputated back there. It's bad. You'd think that they would put those butt pads on him like they do with women. But nope, just sagging straight up. You know, even in King of the Hill, Hank Hill got butt. Right. <laughs> I'm telling you, if I pull up a picture right now, you'll be like, oh, that's bad. <laughs> Do it. I'm telling you. <laughs> All right. Well, you have to carry this. for. <laughs> right, I'll carry this while you're pulling up pictures of a dude. You tell me one. your favorite. Uh... But one, one show, one adaptation that I don't know if it's legit, but I'll be interested to see because I think with that genre, they better not fuck it up. Oh, shit. Is uh, Resident Evil. Oh, you you post that and I'm like, (gasps) hold the fuck up now, because that's also a different feel to it all around. Yeah, yeah, I'm really worried. Like Walking Dead, the reason why I quit watching Walking Dead was also he has no ass. (laughs) See, nothing. There's nothing there. It's like his jeans are just clinging for dear life. But I still love him so much. And he's married to Peyton from One Tree Hill. Who I also love. What anyway. Was, what was I going to say? Because now we're... You were saying Resident oh, yeah. Evil. No, no, no. So The Walking Dead, not only did I stop watching it because it was so similar to the graphic novels, I actually didn't mind that because some of it was like, oh, that's interesting. But where I got... But like, right in, coming into the second season, you would go sometimes up to two episodes on a single zombie. It turned into a fucking soap opera for like a season and I'm like, I'm out. Well, yeah, but the whole point <clears> of it was that... In the end, it wasn't the monsters you had to be afraid of. It was the people who turned into monsters. Because depending on whose team you were on, you were the right person. Like, you were the one defending your home from these people. And the other people were the ones who were trying to get in because they were trying to survive. So, like, there were some really bad, bad guys in The Walking Dead in that they had just gone completely rogue and were, like, evil. But a lot of the the psychological aspect of it was the fact that, like, 
these people had this zombie apocalypse thing never happened would have been your friends. They would have been the people that your kids went to school with. Like, but instead you're like pointing guns at each other. Like, no, this is our fucking food. This is our place. We found this safe spot. Get the fuck out. Like, and depending on whose team you've been watching the entire time, like you're on their side. Cause these are your people, which is exactly how it would be in a real life situation. It's not the monsters. They progressively start to decay and eventually they're just not going to even really be, an issue like the, just now like in the later seasons they're just like walking around them like they're like yeah you're cute you know so unless they hoard you like and catch you like unaware which shame on you at this point but like you know it's really the people are the monsters kind of like frankenstein you know i'm in it for the zombies so <laughs> <laughs> give me world war z not even that. That was terrible. I didn't like the book. I read that book. I didn't no, like 28 book. Days Later, where the, the fucking zombies can, like, just uh, full-on run. <laughs> that yeah. shit was fucking terrifying. Because the whole point of zombie movies are, if you're smart, you can at least outrun them or That's outmaneuver like Dawn, them. Romero's Dawn of the Dead were, in the, were there in the mall. That is, hands yeah. down, still my favorite oh. zombie movie. I watched that movie so much to where I went out as, as in high school and I bought... The director's cut i've seen all the extra footage i've watched it with the commentary. i love that she's a nurse <laughs> i love that the one is pregnant i love that there's a zombie fucking baby like there's just nothing that you the where they're picking off zombies and they're calling them out by, their, by the like get burt reynolds you know and they're like oh yeah <laughs> And the dude across the way is just yes, pegging him off. he's just pegging him off. Oh, the best one he holds up is Rosie O'Donnell. Yes, and he's like watching him on the scope and ping, the guy, the zombie goes down. That shit was wonderful. Best movie ever. I love it. 10 out of 10, for yeah, sure. I would watch that again and again. I watch it every time I happen upon it. I'm like, oh. You know, you know what's sad is I look at that and in my opinion, that's one of the last great zombie movies. Granted, it was, it was made by the man. Yeah. But that's one of the last great ones because- also. Like, George Romero. Romero is the name of the dog in my book because of George Romero. Just so you know. I, I just think that we don't get zombie movies like that anymore, and that's a shame. I think that there's yet to be one since that has stood up to that caliber. Because it was open world and zombies, but still, even though they're in this mall, it's so claustrophobic and... But really, so you think about it, like, I always thought that was genius. Like, a mall, it's got food, it's got supplies, you know, there's like, all anything you could really need you could find in a mall there's an underground to it usually you know there's always places that you can lock yourself in if you needed to like you really can't get better like but then you think of all of the glass and all of the windows and then it's like maybe not it's only sort of like a perceived safety which you know also plays on your like psychological fears so like i just thought it was such a great idea like the mall, well, duh, why didn't I think of that? And, and the nuance of, you know, these, you know, based off of, like, um, just blatant cancerous consumerism that we as society are, are, are victims to, and now these zombies, these mindless creatures just drawn to the mall to consume. It's just also just beautifully done. It's true. God. But I keep thinking of the very first one. Was the very first one, um... The not, the, not... The black and white. Where the but black it, guy but, made it to the very fucking end before they killed but him. But was it Dawn of the Dead? Was that the original? The very first one. <clears throat> when he's in the cemetery, I will never forget this, the black and white one, and he looks over at his sister and in the creepiest voice ever is like, they're coming for you, Barbara. And just like, it just sent like this sort of like, Bleh, like down my whole body. And I was just like, Ugh. And I was just like, this movie is terrifying. And I was watching. Oh, no, was it Dawn of the Dead or Night of the Living? No, I think it's Night of the Living it Dead. Is. Thank Night you. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, because I was like, Dawn of the Dead was like the like that was much later, but like Night of the Living Dead. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And yeah, it was. Wasn't it Sidney Poitier who played in like I believe like so. he was like a really they were really big name actors who were doing this and zombie that was one movie. One of the first film films ever done where where um, somebody of color was the hero. Yeah. And then they survived to the end and then were killed by other white survivors that are just like eh, black zombie. Yeah. Bang. Let that be a lesson to you. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Haven't really come all that far. Uh, but yeah, no, that was that was legit. I was mainline things like nightmare on elm street which was graphically like more terrifying but just that that just that line and it just like had this such a creepy feel to it 
But there was another movie I watched with my mom. Yes, we're meandering way off topic again, but this is just what, how we roll now. You guys know um, that. This is the bullshit part. Remember, uh, this podcast is a shit show. It was Christmas Eve. My mom and I couldn't sleep, and there was this weird old black and white movie, and the one guy was the dude who played the caretaker in the old show New Heart about the, the, the New England, like – uh a bed and breakfast and it was like it was really big in the 80s bob newhart like they had a like an inn and like and it was like all the people but the guy was old who was the caretaker but he was really young in this movie and the chick it turned out the chick was like an axe murderer and this is like a movie that took place in like the 50s and to me that was like so horrific like these old black and white movies were creepy uh house on haunted hill uh the the original 13 ghosts like the black and white one where they shoot the lady and she's just like, I'll have to pull it up for you because it's goddamn creepy. But the lady just skates past and she's just like, just sails by. And they shot it because she was on roller skates. So literally there's just a seamless her just kind of flying through the hallway, like past the doorway. But somehow it is still so fucking scary, even though you're like, that's just a lady on roller skates. Okay, but the, I haven't seen the originals, but the modern <sighs> 13 Ghosts. Still one of my favorites. I watch yep. that movie all the, the time. The modern house on Haunted Hill because they were the ones that started doing oh, that the stop, stop motion. Yep. You, yep. Yep. That <clears throat> shit still skeeves me out. Oh, that stop motion. <laughs> and one thing that I raise about movies like that is because there's a lot of movies that do some of that stop motion or those quick little flash yeah. cut scenes to like something really grim and horrible. Like, have you ever seen another good one that used to terrify me was Event Horizon? I don't think I've seen it. I know I don't think I've seen it. Okay, we're gonna have to watch Event Horizon. Okay, <laughs> look, you're staring um, at me like I'm crazy. It, like, it, I haven't and seen anybody it. in here that's ever seen one of these horror movies, you'll you'll, you'll know this part where they, they, there's like a quick little flash scene to some gory, horrible thing that's happening, like somebody getting carted or something, but then it's gone. Like somebody f- gets a flash of like a horror scene and then it goes away. I get aggravated. That I'm like, no, show more of that horror scene. Like, don't just like show me like somebody getting their head cut off with a fucking plastic knife, and then just show me somebody starting to do it, and then flashes away to a different scene. No, I'm I'm, I'm here for this. But that's part of the thing I hated about House on Haunted Hill, uh, the the new one, the the television show for Netflix, or, or no, Haunting of Hill House, Haunting of Hill House. My bad. Um, they this constant like flash of like, just you know like ooh scary, ooh scary, like it. Everybody was just like, oh, my God, it's so terrifying. It was, like, terrifying for people who don't like horror movies. People who mainline horror movies, like, I don't think found that scary at all. And it was just, like, it was trying so hard to be scary. When in reality, it was just so sad and depressing. And it was like, oh, well, every person represented a stage of grief and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, yeah, I got it. It was fucking depressing. I like my horror way more, like, just... Just show me some some something scary without it having to have like some sort of deeper meaning, right? Ugh, just like just give me the gore. Ah, no, I don't. Actually, I don't like gore. I just like psychological thrillers. Those are my that's my jam. Okay, all right. Let's go see. Let's, what, let's see what these uh, readers or not really readers listeners had to say. <laughs> um, well, I had to say apparently that I liked the Princess Bride movie better than the book which is true story i still stand by that okay so the actor that played Diego montoya mandy patinkin thank you that scene where he's fighting in that one i don't know if you read if you read it but his dad a few months before they started filming this died of cancer and so he had his like he in his mind his method actor convinced himself that this mutated man with the extra finger was the cancer and he was actually fighting him for his dad back and i'm like that's why that's such a powerful scene yeah i read it i read that i saw it online or something but you had told me that but i saw it online and like i reposted it and people were so mad at me they're like oh my god you just ruined it <laughs> like one of my favorite scenes in the book well, now no, i'm crying supposed to be sad but victorious like if you I honestly, if you didn't get some of those emotions out of watching that scene anyway, you kind of missed the point. Uh, all right. So Molly had some thoughts. <laughs> she said books or movies that she enjoyed more than the book. Uh, Lord of the Rings, What Dreams May Come. So fucking sad. Oh, Robin Williams. Yeah. Oh, oh, just the hawking. Just saying the name of it makes me like want to be clinically depressed. Um, Princess Bride. She agreed with me. Uh, Memoirs of a Geisha. That was another one that was more visually appealing 
than I think, because I read the book and I was just like, meh, but I am admittedly not a literary person. I don't like fucking Words. literature, you know, anything that you're going to see on usually like the generic New York Times bestseller like list with the curated content type stuff. I'm I'm not about it. I'm not about the Oprah book club or Reese Witherspoon's book club. I just, it's all too artsy for me. I like either a YA or psychological thrillers, like I said. Yeah, I want to be entertained. My life is depressing enough. I want to escape that shit for a while by watching people get murdered. Um, let's see. But Memoirs of a Geisha was beautifully shot. Like, the whole thing was so visually beautiful. It just wasn't very interesting to me. Um, Atonement. I never saw it, but it looked so depressing that I just skipped it. <laughs> Yeah, I haven't seen it either. Uh, oh, ooh, um, Shutter Island by Dennis Lehane. That's a good movie. Every one of his books is hands down just phenomenal. Mm. He's an awesome writer. That That is but, like a psychological thriller yeah, for the ages. Nobody does psychological thrillers better than Dennis Lehane. And, and his adaptations stand up to the books 100%. I can't say that I like, like for Mystic River, I can't say I like the book better than the movie or the movie better than the book. They're both fantastic. When you can write in a first person and still not know, based on multiple POVs, who the killer is till the very end, even when you're in their head, he's a fucking genius. I love his stuff. But Shutter Island was amazing. Um, Gone Girl, she mentioned. I like the I like the book better than the movie. Uh, the movie and <laughs> Neil Patrick Harris. I was right? getting ready to say Neil Patrick Harris. Like, guys, <laughs> MPH, who I love. Yeah. Um, it was, it was just, but I don't like Ben Affleck, so it kind of that kind of ruins the movie for that, me. That's another one where, like, the movie you take it or leave it, but the written story of that one is very, very interesting because of the way she she wrote the book. Like, you go into the book thinking you're reading a certain type of book, and then you get to the middle of the book, and it's like record oh, scratch like what glass break record <laughs> yeah. scratch hey yeah. that's me Holy in the middle shit. <laughs> yeah and then it starts off something um completely different uh i read a couple of her other books were, which were actually really good but i have to say i didn't read sharp objects but i watched the mini series on hbo it is absolutely one of the most fucked up stories and it is so well done you should totally watch it i recommend it highly to anybody um amy adams plays the main character and she usually plays like these like you know she was a girl in enchantment enchanted was it enchantment what is the one where she becomes like she's a fairy tale character she comes like no 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 that's uh anne hathaway um the one where she's like she's a actual fairy tale like princess and she comes into modern reality and patrick dempsey like yeah so the the one who plays the main character she's the one who plays in uh sharp objects and you watch the first episode and you're just like, nobody plays a dysfunctional person as well as she does. Because, you know, like, usually it's like, oh, they're like artfully dysfunctional where it's like, they're still pretty. And it's like, they almost romanticize how fucked up somebody is. There's nothing romantic about this. Like, this bitch is fucked up and is just, it's it's so real. It's so real and so just wrong. And everything that happens in that shit, you're just like, Oh my God. Oh my God. And the fucking ending is phenomenal. Psychological thriller. Totally, totally amazing. Definitely watch it. And this has been my record. Oh, no <laughs> and shit. you can send the check to, um, but yeah, totally watch it. Uh, let's see. Uh, a very long engagement. I never heard of that never one. Heard of it Moving on. The Passage. I think that's... Didn't they just turn that into a television show with uh, uh, so. Zach Morris? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mark Paul Gosler? I was really alarmed because somebody said, oh, Mark Paul Gosler has excellent chemistry with the main character. She's 12. Can we not use the word chemistry? Yeah, that just has a weird, like, creepy connotation, even though they don't mean it that way. When they're talking about the girl from that plays Eleven, how she's trying to be the yeah, sexiest person alive, yeah. and I'm like, she's like she's, thirteen. Yeah, you the stop fuck that. You, you shut your dirty mouth. You leave her alone. Uh, the Princess Bride. Somebody mentioned that again. Uh, oh, the Vampire Diaries. 
Uh, I love the books, but I also love the show. I have to look at them in two completely different so speaking entities. Of, speaking of, of vampires, just real quick, divert back to me, because that's all I care about, really, <laughs> is um, talking about book-to-film adaptations. Curtains um, is a huge fan of Anne Rice, and she got me involved in Word. reading Anne Rice and stuff like that. And I got to say, from what I have been told... The first one, she was very involved with it, literally on set for Interview with the Vampire. Oh, yeah, no, she was. And she was pissed that they picked Tom Cruise for Lestat because he was not at all what she wanted. And then she actually came out afterwards and said, no, he did a fantastic job, which I don't know if they paid her to say that or not. Queen of the Damned, I hear, was, was, it might be a good movie, but not close. It's hard to say because, like, I think that, um, who was that, Guy Stewart, I think? He played a much better version of Lestat and the like, curtains and the curtains agree yeah that's one thing if you took me. him and put him in an interview with a vampire it probably would have changed the dynamic so much um and um oh god I don't want to mess up her name but was it Aaliyah was it Aaliyah who yeah. plays oh my god she was fucking stunning Oh my God, she was gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. She did a great job. And they changed a lot at the end, like with Maharet and the things that happened. Right? Yeah, like, I don't know what I don't know what the end game was with that. I think I think if it had gone better, they probably would have maybe they were looking. They at changed it because yeah, because they wanted I think to continue the storyline, but I just don't think it played out well. People were had already kind of burnt out on Interview with the Vampire, so like when they came along and then they changed, you know the. The they waited a really me. long time from interview to Queen of the Dan. I think that's because interview hit and hit hard. Oh yeah. I think the fact that I mean there had to be. I mean Brad decade. Pitt, Tom Cruise, and and uh, friggin' Antonio Banderas, and like like all of these like heavy hitters back in the day. Christian Slater, like just eye candy galore. And, 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 there yeah, was there wasn't the, a dry seat in the house. What's, yeah. the, what's the girl? She um, Kirsten Stewart. Yeah, Kirsten no Kirsten Stewart. Dunst. Kirsten Sorry. Dunst? Yes. Okay. Kirsten Dunst. Yeah, got her first kit from Brad Pitt. At the age of like 11. Uh, yeah, I'm sure a lot of women are angry about that. Yeah, it was a weird scene, but my God, she played that scene so well. Like she, for being so young, she really did a great job of acting like a woman trapped in a little girl's body. Like she just had like so much like maturity that like when you actually watch the scene play out, it wasn't as horrifying as you kind of expect it to be. Like, oh my God, he's a grown ass man and she's like a 12 year old. You're like, yes, but she's supposed to be like a 300 year old vampire. And he's like, well, that, you know. I remember I was saying that, and then let's kind of when Layla pointed out, like, there was one scene and she was like, well, keep in mind, hon, um, at this point, she's been with them. You know, she was like 12 when they turned her. And at this point, she's been with them for 40 years. So she's in her she's in her early 50s. Yeah. So yeah, she's going to have those feelings because really she's a 50-year-old woman yeah. in the kid's body. Which is why turning a, a child into a vampire is literally the cruelest thing you could do. Which, by the way, plays out really well in book five of my series. Um, oh, well, well, what's the one that going to like True Blood for a little second here? When there's that one girl that got turned into a vampire that really like goody two shoes girl oh jessica finally decides to have sex it's uncomfortable because the first time she's like okay a little bit better the next time but she was a vampire before she had sex so then she kept healing yep and be re-virginizing herself every time she had sex i was like oh that's awful that's just like that's the definition of maddening like like being a child you know like being a fully grown person trapped in a child's body like that would just be Horrific, because the only kind of people who would want to have sex with you are, are dirty, dirty, disgusting adults. Like, that's so gross. Like, talk about the ultimate and psychologically just fucking somebody over for life. I could see why all fucking children vampires go insane. You know, they, they, they could have do. I think it would be an interesting storyline, one of those what-if things. Like, you know, like, Claudia, you have a vampire that looks like a child, but she's, you know, 50, 60 years old, who just goes around killing pedophiles. In, like, the most horrible, like, serial killer way possible. Well, I mean, it's uh, there's actually, I'm pretty sure there's a, uh, what do you call it, a graphic novel uh, or a manga like that where she's, like, this little girl and she basically tricks pedophiles into, uh, like, having sex with her and then, like, kills them mid-grossness. There was a scene of that in, uh, you know, the, the, Japanese. in, in the first Kill Bill movie, <laughs> Lucy Liu's character. Yeah, very similar to that, but there's an actual whole series about it. Hmm. I don't read that stuff, but um, Mikaela's friend is a huge, like, just anime junkie, and she's really into manga. 
which I'm sure she's going to tell me I pronounced that wrong, but I don't give a fuck. Whatever. Manga, manga, manga. Yeah, manga, whatever. manga, whatever. I'm you say I'm going to sound stupid either way. Stupid. <laughs> so. But, All right. So what else we got on there? Anybody? Let's see. Let's see. Dracula. Yes. Bram Stoker's Dracula. Like, visually stunning. So good. But Good God, Keanu Reeves trying to do a fucking English accent. That that was difficult. That was from Keanu was the the Bill and Ted Keanu, not the John Wick Keanu. Yeah, I still love him though. Good Lord, what a sweet person in real life. He's just such a good guy. I don't even like to talk bad about him because he's such a nice person you see that in real life. Of him on the subway, like he's sitting there and he's just on his phone doing his thing, and somebody's got like a bad camera. This video, it's obviously paparazzi. Yeah, but then uh oh. It's either a pregnant woman or an older woman gets on, and he and, just and he gives stands up right up seat. and like gives a seat. Well, he right gave up. up his entire salary of like the Matrix to to all of the like to all of the sound people and the the all special the effects people. people. He gave up like it was like for the third movie. Yeah, he, gave, he took his salary and broke it between each one of them and made each one of them got over a million dollars. Like he yeah. made each one of these sound guys with the microphones a millionaire. Because he lives he's like, like nope, they earned it. He lives like in like a little brownstone. He takes the subway everywhere. He's oh, just, there's th- hundreds of pictures yeah. of him. Out so because he does it's he just he's just a totally nice guy and bad things always happen to him like what like his uh baby died um was born stillborn then his then like he the same woman who had the baby they split up and a year later she died in a car accident like bad shit man like it's just sad and he's such a good guy. It's not fair. Somebody That might please. be why he so humbles because he's had so much <laughs> shit happen. He's yeah. just been humbled to nothing, you know? And I don't think he had a great childhood either. Anyway, moving on. That's been sad, Keanu. All right, updates. what else we got? Uh, Handmaid's Tale, somebody mentioned. Oh, Game of Thrones. I can't believe we haven't mentioned Game of Thrones. Everybody fucking loves them. Some incestuous GOT. <laughs> Never seen it. Never read it what the fuck okay reading it i understand i've read the first three books it's dense it is fucking dense like having to like try to remember like i felt like i needed you know that like fucking meme of the guy with like the cigarette hanging out of his mouth and he's pointing and he's got all like the red fucking string and everything and all the things yeah. that's what it feels like when you're trying to That's keep characters. always sunny in philadelphia yeah like it's that kind of character like where you're just trying to always like keep track i'm really great at like reading like really dense stuff but even i was like four pages i'm like wait which which pov is this brand brawn why does everybody's name sound the same like you know that kind of shit but the show it's got a way of just like sucking you in and no matter how dark it gets you just always have this slight sliver of hope like it's got to get better and it never does it's always just sad and horrible and somehow it makes you go from being horrified by the incest in season one to rooting for the incest in season seven. And it doesn't feel weird at all. Yeah. Seriously, you guys have got to watch this fucking show. I cannot believe you people aren't watching Game of Thrones. What do you mean you people? You people. You, the curtains. You, as in the two of you people. What do you mean? You're white, Zach. What the fuck do you think I mean? (laughs) You Polacks. Hey, that is our word. <laughs> You're not even that Polish, are you? Yeah. Oh, that's right. You thought you weren't Polish, but ha ha, joke's on you, you Way are. More. The best part about that, we did that ancestry thing, we found out that Layla's actually more Irish than I am. <laughs> that one hurt a little. That's great. Um, somebody else mentioned Lord of the Rings again. Blech. Anyway, uh, moving on. Uh, Percy Jackson movies. Uh, oh, oh, warm, yeah, and warm bodies. So check this out real quick. I'm Percy Jackson. I'm telling my little Rick Royden tale about you know social media and all that stuff to her family in Texas, and they go, "Oh, Rick, we've been friends with him for you know since his books kicked off. His wife doesn't let him come around, which is, her fucking family is legit like personal friends with Rick Royden. Has known him for years enough to like, yeah, his wife kind of, yeah." It's nuts. It's the coolest shit ever. But they're just like, oh, His yeah. His wife doesn't let him come play anymore, no, essentially. She, uh, they're like, yeah, no, she's uh, she's really been, like, dry, helping him, like, drive his career. And she keeps him very driven and, like, task-focused. And, and She locks him in his office at night. But then, like, they're passing, like, they're passing, like, oh, you know what? If you talk to him next, tell him we said hi and stuff like that. I'm like, okay, I did not know that Layla's family is fucking best friends with Rick Royden. Cool. I didn't even know that's how he said his last name. I'm. That's how I say his fucking last name. I mean, I don't. I. I don't know how he says it. I've never actually heard it said out loud. I thought it was Reardon, but I could be wrong. I have no idea. 
Um, it's just kind of like wind and wind, you know? <laughs> yeah, I guess it doesn't matter. Um, yeah, but Warm Bodies. That dude was at a... Yeah, I met him. Yeah, I was going to say, he was at, what, UtopiaCon? Was yeah. it Utopia? Yeah, yeah, it was the last Utopia. He's really quiet, and all the girls wanted a piece of his D. Well, I mean, you know, because he got a fucking movie deal. Which was a great movie. The kid who played the main character, I, I loved him in the British version of Skins. Fucking great show. Um, what the hell is that kid's name? Nicholas Holt. Yeah, he's a great actor. He did a good job. It was it was actually a lot funnier than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was supposed to be serious, but it was pretty funny. Um, somebody else mentioned the the Princess Diaries and Ella Enchanted. Uh, oh, and A Walk to Remember with Mandy Moore. Remember that shit? Oh, mm -hmm. got a dry eye in the fucking house. Like, I love her. I just started, I just deep dived into fucking This Is Us. Holy shit. Every fucking episode is just like an existential crisis. <laughs> and then there's only two more. Oh, nope, only one more because the other people mentioned The Hunger Games and A Walk to Remember. Again, um, love comes softly. What? <laughs> Cheesy, <laughs> wait, wait for it. Cheesy Christian pioneer period romance based off of Jeanette Oakey books that I grew up on and am a sucker for. <laughs> books were okay. Love the movies. Love comes Cheesy softly. Christian pioneer period romance. That's a lot. <laughs> That's a lot. That's, um... <laughs> so much. And, uh... Yeah. Yeah. That sounds like... I think we should just leave it with cheesy Christian pioneer romances. <laughs> I just like the title. That should be a poem. Love comes softly. Ew. Stop it. <laughs> I feel dirty just saying it. <laughs> Take that, Christians. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they inadvertently made porn. <laughs> <laughs> Rule number 34. All right, well, I think that's about it. This episode <laughs> has seen some ups and downs. <laughs> Holy shit. Wowzers. All righty. All right, guys. Well, this has been Books and Bullshit. Go check out our social media and start paying us. Martina, tell them about our social media. Uh, Facebook.com slash Books and Bullshit Podcast or Instagram.com slash Books and BS Podcast and then Twitter... Hang on, I've got this. Twitter.com slash books bullshit P1, as in the number one, not O N E or. Not pwn. W O N. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> just, say, just say goodbye. God. Bye. <laughs> Bye.